This is Switzerland and my trip to the Five Lake Hike at Pitzel. The Five Lake Hike is a perfect low effort, high reward hike. It's a gentle stroll around the area and you almost get a full alpine experience. You'll get great views, high peaks, rugged landscapes, a glacier, cows, and not one, but five lakes, which all looks perfect. This is a perfect short half day trip if you don't have more time, or you can stay and enjoy the full day. My name is Frederick, and these are my adventures. We started early to get there before most others. This is a very popular hike, and you'll see that in the video. It takes some time to get up there, but if you're tired from waking up early, you can just sit and relax in the cable cars. There are a total of three short lifts here, and there are short walks between all three of them, and that's also where you find restaurants and bathrooms. You won't find any of those along the hike today, so be sure to bring your food and drinks so you manage the whole route. Today we're doing the Five Lake hike up in Pizzo, and this is right above Bad Ragaz. It's in the beginning just a gentle little uphill with the gondola all the way up to the top. And from there, you only have to climb 200 meters to see the amazing lakes we're gonna see in a bit. But right now, we're just gonna enjoy the view. And behind here, you have Appenzell. And there's a video, which I'm gonna link up here in the top right corner. So that's a just a covering all the things I did up in there and up until. On the other hand, on the other side here, you would have Vaduz, you have Liechtenstein and hold that area. Fortunately, I've not been there and made a video yet, but it's also a really cool place. And if you wanna tick off an additional country where you've been, perfect place to go. The last lift is a bit chilly when it's windy, so bring a windbreaker. It's also very useful once you get up to the first lake because it will get a bit cold there, even though it's very hot down in the valley. The first part is a nice stroll with some good views towards where we came from. This is mostly a transport section to get to the first lake, but it's super pretty, so you should still enjoy it. The first lake is actually located on the other side of the chairlift, and most people miss this, including myself in this video. So I will refer to the lakes with the wrong number along the whole route. As you can see, we're not the only people that decided to go here today. And this hike is very popular, so you can expect a steady stream of people walking at all times. After an easy 200 meters of ascent, you covered the worst climb of the hike. And that instantly within the first hour before you get to the first lake. It seems like this hike gets a fair amount of tourists because usually you don't have signs like this. Swiss people, for example, they don't litter. They do pick up litter from others though, just to keep their mountains clean. But to be honest, if you carry it up here, you should be able to carry it down as well and throw it in the trash. Now we've arrived to Vilze, and this is the highest lake along the way on 2,433 meters above sea level. It's located a few hundred meters north of Pitzel and the Pitzel Glacier. And obviously we had to spend some time here for the obligatory photo shooting, just to get that perfect picture when the sun was shining on the lake. During the hike, you'll experience a mix of small to wide paths, gravel, bigger rocks and so on. In theory, you can use sneakers, which my friend did, but it's always more comfortable with good hiking boots, which are stable and give better traction. People ask me a lot if sneakers are fine for different hikes. And generally, if you're a bit more cautious, you'll be fine, but I would never recommend to use sneakers in the mountains. Hiking in the mountains like this is not a normal walk and there's a risk involved being up here, which the Swiss government makes clear in a lot of ads. If you go into the mountains for the first time, my opinion is to get a good pair of hiking boots. The rest of the gear doesn't really matter. It will just make you more or less comfortable. 
here in the background you have Pitzel and that's the place where you hike up to if you want it's not that hard it's just an additional roughly four or five hundred meters of ascent to get there but it's nice you're gonna get a similar view to what you have here but we decided that we're gonna do this hike and get this beautiful view and then continue down here all the way down here so this hike is very good if you have kids because the first part is not too hard it's just 200 meters up and then after that you can walk around here see these lakes and walk down there cross over on the other side and then down to the cable car again so it's very very chill but very windy so either you can do the short or the long hike here depending on if you want to make it to the top of Pitzel. The longer hike will add 4.5 kilometers and 330 meters of ascent and descent. We had to go with the shorter one today, but they're both very manageable. So we now started to descend down to the second lake. And as you can see down here, this is where most people actually have their lunch. So Pitzel, Pitzel which we had there on the other side, that's 2,844 meters. And around this, you have roughly one, 120 kilometers of hiking trail in this general area. So that's what you do here in the summer. And in the winter, they do have skiing and so on around here as well. And it's probably not as famous as the other places, but it's still really good because it's Switzerland, right? So everything here can be skied, to be honest. I say this in most of my videos, but I'm far from reaching the thousand required subscribers, which YouTube set up. I know people don't subscribe because everyone is bothering you about it, but if there are some people you should support, it's the small creators which need to reach that YouTube threshold. I would really appreciate if you could help me out by subscribing. And if you don't want to do this for me, that's fine. But keep that in mind when you watch other small creators. Maybe you can help them instead. You have plenty of cool places to take photos along the way. And chances are that you're not going to miss it because there are plenty of others taking those photos too. So you just have to queue up. And again, as you can see, there are always a steady stream of people following the route. So don't think that you're going to have time alone here. Schottensee, which we're on our way to now, is located on an altitude of 2,332 meters above sea level. My experience is that the color of this lake becomes more vivid the later in the season you go here. Most people we saw had lunch here, but we couldn't unfortunately, and we had to save it for later. I did have my priorities straight though. And now it's time for a swim. And I managed to get two other groups of people to swim too. They were a bit afraid of the temperature of the water, but at least there weren't any ice around this time. <laughs> but it's not like... You gonna jump? Are you, are you gonna do it or are you gonna wait? But I'm waiting. Okay, so, so as far as... For out I swim, you have to swim no. as well. Okay? <laughs> You're from Sweden. So. <laughs> <laughs> There's your turn. <laughs> yeah. 
looking a bit drunk there, <laughs> couldn't walk straight. But you should pay attention, because there are very sharp rocks in these waters. And it would be kind of a bummer if you hurt yourself here midway through, and then had to try to make it back to the cable cars. I've received plenty of questions regarding if it's allowed to swim in these lakes. I haven't found anything in Switzerland stating that you're not allowed to, unless it's explicitly stated, of course. I would be cautious when it's a lake with a dam, though, because the current there is a bit different than in a natural lake. After the second lake, you follow the side of the mountain while looking down the valley. Once you hit the end, you'll zigzag over to cross to the other lake, and here, you have the opportunity to look back at the first and second lake before crossing. So now it's time to pass from that side where you had the two first lakes, did a little uphill, downhill, steep down there, and you have the third lake. And then we'll walk over here. You probably can't really see it this time. But you see over there, down there, that's where you had the first lake. Below here, you have the second lake. But we're continuing here, all the way to the other side. And there, on the other side, it goes steep down, and you get back to the chairlift. But for now, we're just going to enjoy this beautiful lake down there. My hair is a mess. It wasn't a good hair day, and I don't think the swim helped either. I should have cut my hair before making this video. Anyway, now it's time to descend down to the third lake. The light here makes everything shiny and pretty in an odd way. I can't really explain it because you can't see it on the video, and you really have to go there to experience this. The cable car that we took up here starts at 8.30 and it ends at four in the afternoon. So make sure that you do the whole route within that planned amount of time. Otherwise you have to hike all the way down and it's fairly far so you probably don't want to do it. This one is one of my favorites. I do like the other one we swam in, but when you get down here you get this beautiful reflection once you take the photos. And this taking the photos from up here in general just looks amazing with this whole background. Here's a photo I took here a few years ago. I really liked it and it really shows the amazing reflection you get in this lake. Further in, behind the lake, you see some people camping. And I'm not sure about the rules here in Switzerland. In Sweden, where I'm from, it's very easy. You can just stay wherever you want, as long as you respect nature and the owners of the area you camp at. So if you're from Switzerland, please, could you explain me the rules in the comments? Because I would love to know. After this incredible lake, you'll have the last ascent of the day, and it's only like 50 meters, so it's not tough at all. After that, you'll have 4 kilometers of only downhill all the way down to the cable car. On the top, people have built these really cool sculptures, and it's a good spot to enjoy the view, because on a good day, you can see really far all the way to Austria and Germany. While walking down here, you'll find plenty of good places to take nice pictures. 
This is one of my favorites, which I took when I was young and dumb. Don't take these pictures like this. It's very risky, and <laughs> I know better now. Last time, I crawled out there, because I'm very scared of heights, but it's still stupid. <laughs> these two ladies kept following us all the way down the mountain, and they were in and out of shop for a very long time. Here, we actually waited 10 minutes while they had their coffee, just so we could take a picture of my friend. But the mountains are for everyone, and we need to respect each other. It's not only a good spot for a photo, but also to enjoy the view. This respect should have been taught to the guy throwing rocks at my drone. When it comes to flying drones here in Switzerland, there are a few regulations which you should know, and I've linked them in the descriptions. They've even created a very good map, which you can overlay with the different restrictions. We're now at the last lake, at an altitude of 2,174 meters. The lake is called Bashalva and lies below the steep slope of the Pitzel Massif. From here, you can see all the way to the Rhine Valley on a clear day. Now, we're almost at the end, and after a short walk, you'll get to the last ascent. At this point, you'll have this view all the way down to the cable car station. The last cable car going up from here is at 4 p.m., while the one going down stops at 4.30. If you have a full day you can spend here, you can either spend it all by the lakes, or you can buy the package deal available where you buy the tickets. The package consists of the cable car ticket and two hours at the thermal bath at Badragatz. That's a very nice option after wearing yourself out on this hike. It's important that you keep track of your ticket here, because you're going to show it on each station, both on the way up and down. From the top of the second cable car, you can rent these vehicles, which you can take down. They will take your backpack in the cable car, and you can collect it once you get to the bottom. And that's the bottom of the second lift, because you cannot take it all the way down. At this time, we had lunch at 4.30pm. I don't really get hungry when I hike anyway, so it didn't really matter. And that was everything for today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and please share in the comments if you have other cool hikes which I can make videos of. Thank you, and goodbye!